Larson? Here. Klein? Here. President Larson? Here. Trustee Thomas? Here. Whalen? Here. Zappa? Here. All present. All right. Uh, first item is review of the re review, review and approve the minutes from the last board meeting from December 5. The chair would entertain a motion. Second. Are there any corrections, additions, or changes to the minutes? Page three. Okay, where? This paragraph under library amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So noted. I'll make those corrections. What was the change? I missed it. Spelling of O'Connor. Oh, okay. Great. Any other changes? All right, seeing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Any comments from the floor? Yeah. I'm going to assume there's not. <laughs> Governor John, it's up to you. Well, I'm not a resident, remember? <laughs> <laughs> still thankful of that. <laughs> 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 uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, direct legislation and before we get into discussion I want to just provide a little background on that at last month's board meeting Mark was substituting for Joe Cawthorn who was the chair of public works and Mark was um, just summarizing the fact that there was a discussion at that public works meeting on the issue of direct legislation, if I'm correct, okay. And uh, now, because that was not an agenda item in December, we we didn't have any any other type of discussion about it, other than for Mark to recount what would, what had transpired at the public works uh, session. But I did indicate that that with respect to the topic, that I'd at least put it on this month's agenda for discussion. Okay. Uh, now I noticed in our board packets uh, it actually uh, uh, included language which said we were going to repeal that ordinance. Okay. Now did that come out of Public Works? No. That recommendation. Okay. No, and and it doesn't have an ordinance number. It just shows you the the information for discussion. Yeah. Now, we, we've talked about that ordinance in the past. We talked about it in the context of does, is it reasonably clear? And that, and that language was obviously lifted from other comparable language used elsewhere in the state of Wisconsin. Um, there are really two issues associated with that particular ordinance. The first one is it limits the board's ability to spend capital dollars to some dollar amount. Uh, which is in requires us to go to referendum if we want to do that. Second issue then is it sets a particular financial limit, at, at which point then triggers the referendums. Okay. Uh, and I would just remind everybody that when that ordinance was presented to the residents in 2002, I think it was for approval. It was approved by a, a, a very very overwhelming number, like. 800 to, to 200. I mean, two it was to three to one. It was a, you know, a large number. Um, and one of the practical questions I've got, Tom, and I, I meant to call you today and didn't. I don't know if you can answer this question off the top of your head or not. This is a test that will be great. Sure. Um, for any community that, that might have an ordinance like this, if you want to change it, can the board just change it, or does it have to go back to referendum? I can't answer that off the top of my head. Okay. But I, can't, I cannot answer that off the top of my head, but I can find that out. Okay. 
No, I think, uh, I mean, I don't mind saying I'm a, I'm a little, I'm, on the one hand, we, we tried to have a conversation once before which said, do we have a clear understanding as to what the $150,000 relates to yeah, we in the language? Agreed. And we ended up with three different interpretations mm -hmm. that night at the board. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we've certainly had uh, two instances of where we have used it, three actually, uh, the two, re two most recent referendums, uh, as well as the Cratley Lane project. Okay? Now, the Cratley Lane project was one where the cost was clearly more than 150000 but the two principal contractors involved had also agreed that they would put their money, uh, they would give their money to do that project up front, okay, which is unusual. So therefore, the village, when it paid its portion, it was less than 150000 So we've kind of at least interpreted from a practical perspective, which is how much money would the village have to borrow related to a given project? How much would we be on the hook for? And if it was less than 150, dollars we don't go to referendum. If it's more than 150, dollars we do. No. Having said that, uh, there was discussion at Public Works and so uh, the table is kind of open in terms of discussion. I'm not looking for resolution on this issue tonight, simply because I think it's too big of an issue to you know, pop on the uh, citizenry on January 2 and say, oh, by the way, guess what we did last night? I don't think that's an appropriate thing to do. Uh, but I certainly would like to have some discussion. And Mark, you wanted to have the discussion, so feel free. Yep. I, I certainly didn't expect any change tonight. I just wanted to get it on the agenda. Um, for all the reasons uh, Larry mentioned, uh, uh, first and foremost, just to talk about it mm -hmm. and to get clear with it, um, I thought we had uh, uh, two examples, good and bad, of its use. Uh, one was the Village Hall edition. I thought that was um, uh, uh, a good referendum type item. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't think um, street construction and reconstruction is a particularly good application of a referendum. I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of um, methods for the uh, public to get involved with public hearings and such before a project becomes finalized and approved. I know I've sat at many of them before a project is finally approved. Um, so I guess I'm uh, my thinking off the top of uh, is 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 while I'm not looking to get rid of the referendum, as I said, a, like a village hall addition or something that affects everyone that isn't specific. Um, it's it's not a terribly bad thing uh, for street reconstruction. I think it's uh, uh, awfully limiting, and and to be quite honest, puts. Uh, um, takes away the control that you need to be able to do what we what we do here. I think there's a lot of uh, villages isn't that big. People have a lot of input um, <clears throat> with the number of meetings we have and just the process itself for a, uh, uh, for at least a public works type project. If it was up to me, I would, I'd like to see that modified. Hundred fifty thousand on top of it all is doesn't go that far these days with a with a capital works project uh, of any type of street reconstruction. So your real issue is the dollar amount that's in the ordinance. Well, my the dollar amount and and uh, quite frankly, I I don't really. I think it's a little. Well, you can tell by the turnout we get here. Very little. I, I think the people um, expect uh, uh, us to be um, uh, um, tempered with our decisions and wise with the dollar. And, and uh, when we when you get to a project, um, each year we go through capital projects. We analyze what we should do, maybe what we shouldn't do, just so we budget. Some drop off, some stay on. Um, 
then I think when a project comes, hits the light of day and it becomes aware to people, I'm not so sure they're as informed as they can be. And to be quite blunt, sometimes they can stop a project needlessly. I mean, the emotions swing some of this thing, some of these mm -hmm. things. And uh, if I seen people sitting at the meetings uh, as we get up to these decisions and they still had the same opinion, I'd probably respect that a little more than just showing up to vote on it based on what they may have heard or might have read. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, they may not be as informed about a particular project. Mm -hmm. Thoughts by anybody else? Yeah, I would uh, add just a little bit to that. I think the informed part of this is, is so much a key. And uh, with what goes on here and behind the scenes, uh, making an executive, intelligent, fact founded decision ultimately can save the community a lot of money as opposed to stopgap measures limited by by a cap um, and I think that with repairs uh, that's something that's more the job of public works um, our engineers have already determined we've got grades of roads throughout the community um, I've been down this road. I mean, it's virtually falling apart. A lot of roads are. I think that it needs to be something that we decide with the facts that we get from the people that are um, in the position to do so. And I think having a little more flexibility, like Mark said, in this is advantageous for, um, for the success of the community in the long term. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree that when it comes to road repair, we are very limited by that $150,000 cap. Let's also remember what uh, precipitated this, and it was a multi-million dollar project that had to do with streets. And there's a big difference between repairing a road and rebuilding a road, which is exactly what, as I said, precipitated this action to have this in the first place. So I'm not registering an opinion on whether to keep it or, or remove this, but just as a kind of a historical note about why it was instituted in the first place. The irony would be that if we got rid of it because of how it inhibits us from repairing our roads when that was actually mm -hmm. what caused in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, repair it and the major construction Oh, I agree with that completely. Yeah. But would you be more comfortable with like a higher level if we proposed a, a higher level, something like that? A, a higher limit. Too. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I agree. Though that the issue is one of: do we repair a road or do we do a complete reconstruction of the road? And should and the entire village decide whether a road that's falling apart should go on their taxes. That's the problem. Um, because we are elected to make certain decisions. The real irony in, in this, in the last uh, referendum that was defeated to repair that uh, section of road was that had the referendum passed, 50 percent of the cost of that would have been borne by the residents. Any repair that we do on it now, any patchwork will be borne by the entire municipality. One thing that I was thinking, though, regardless of whether it's uh, an issue that has to go back to referendum to change, I think it uh, probably should. I think it would be appropriate for the people who voted it in to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Colleen? Well, I think that as far as like, the road repairs and that, I think, should be decided by public works and by us. And if it, nowadays, if it's costing 150 to repair a road, that we either have to raise the limit or something so the roads can get fixed. Because if you keep all these little repairs, I think in the long run it's going to end up being more expensive to do a little repair now, a little repair later. <coughs>
But as Mark said, for something as major as the, the Village Hall addition, that you know, did seem more appropriate for the whole village to vote on. I mean, I don't mind saying I find it, I find, it, I find myself in, in in a strange, if not uncomfortable, position in discussing this whole issue <laughs> for, a whole variety, for a whole variety of reasons. <laughs> Uh, not the least of which was I was certainly one of the uh, you know major advocates for utilizing the um, uh, referendum initiative, and I still think that is a good idea for uh, municipalities. Uh, at the time when we were drafting that language and setting that the language essentially was lifted from another another uh, municipality, and it was recommended to us that we use that language because that's the only language that had, that had ever been tested in the court systems and found to be okay. The dollar amount was one which was put together by you know, a committee of residents as they were uh, engaged in the activity at the time, and the number was arbitrary. It didn't, it didn't have any particular basis for it. Uh, at the time, I argued against that particular number, thinking also that it was a little bit low. Um, as we sit here tonight and discuss it, I feel uncomfortable in the sense that, you know, I like the fact that we, you know, as Mark said, the referendum really, you know, played its role in terms of the, uh, you know, should we add on to the village hall? You know, the residents want to pay for that. Or, or do, does that fall into the category of something people feel like we either need, want, and are willing to pay for? And so we had a vote on that. And residents approved that. The other project, uh, does that have some uh, carryover to the other, some other issues that have gone on here in the village over the last five years? Sure it does. Um, would I want to change this referendum or the, the language that's in that ordinance in order to benefit myself and or anyone in St. Croix Station personally? Absolutely not. As far as I'm concerned, we could patch the road and make it go as long as we have to. So in that sense, I feel a little strange talking about it this close following the most recent election. And it makes me very uncomfortable, but, uncomfortable, but nevertheless, I'll, I certainly have no trouble dealing with it. Uh, and in fact, I was the one that raised the issue before, which is, you know, is the language clear enough even for us as a board to say, you know, when do we pull the hundred, well, when is the $150,000 threshold met? Number one, number two, do you like that one? In the previous board of which, I think there's probably only three of us sitting here now who were on that board, said, well, if we were going to change, I think we'd probably change the dollar amount. Okay. The problem I've got as I just listened to the conversation, which is it was okay for the uh, building, but it's not good for road maintenance, and whether it's St. Grace Station or Helen Street or whether we have to redo Galahad. I don't know how you'd separate capital projects within the ordinance. Because it currently says any capital project, which essentially means something we're going to have to borrow funds for. And I don't know how you'd write an ordinance that would be well, adequate. I think it would be possible to do, you know, there are capital projects that really add infrastructure, like the new building here, or by... Uh, well, streets are part of infrastructure. Yeah, they are. They are. But there's also an existing street you know, it, it exists. The infrastructure exists. You're just trying to maintain it. And so if, you know, if the roof blew off our building and it was going to cost us a couple hundred thousand dollars, we wouldn't necessarily, you know, want to wait until somebody could go to a referendum and uh, repair the roof here while we couldn't use the building. So I... I, I think it would be possible to rewrite it, so it would have to do with maintenance type activity versus where you're really adding infrastructure. And that's my take on it. But um, I share your same comments because I was in support of the original referendum. And I know that we had to, uh, we had to, we had to use the same language that another city did here in Wisconsin. And I think if we, if we had our druthers, we probably would have said, yeah, but, you know, this is very, very, I, I think there was some discussions that this is going to be very restrictive to a, to a board, to the village. Um, but at the time, that's what was, that's what wanted to be done by the, by the individuals in, in, uh, that were seeking the referendum. But I think if we had our druthers, we probably would have, would have thought it through a little bit more and maybe 
done something along maintenance items or whatever it is or maybe even I, I don't know the, the limit does seem a little bit low to me but I but I know that was done by by a committee and uh, the committee consensus was $150,000 um, but my my opinion is is that it it is restrictive to the board it was intended to be restrictive and you know now we're living with that which I think is fine I I don't have a problem with that it's you know it's working well there's no um, question it's having an effect know, on the board in terms of making us yeah and what our pencils yes we well and and I think and I think the the board has been uh, um, good stewards of the the dollars mm -hmm. that the people pay into the tax levy I don't think the debt in the last four to five years since this since this uh, uh, referendum process has been in place I don't know if it's because of referendum process or because of the board members that are that are here now but I'd, I I don't know what our debt increase has been in the last four years, but it certainly wasn't anything like it was the previous eight. And uh, so, and and so my point is is you can have a board, and I and and I'm proud of the fact that this board does watch the expenses, both capital and operating expenses, very very carefully, cautiously. Um, but this board isn't going to be around forever. You, you don't know and so the question is is knowing that uh, do we need to have some sort of restriction on a board that might be here in the future my concern with um, putting some type of additional language in to say what it can be used for mm -hmm. is again we already have problems with interpretation mm -hmm. and one person could read it, interpret, interpret it differently. Well, the idea would be else. to clean it up, clean the language up so that the it other, is the, so it is straight. The other everybody. issue with this is that um, if we have a developer who we sign a development agreement with, when we're agreeing to that project, we're mm -hmm. actually breaking that law, yes. and we wouldn't actually know it. But we would be. Depends on how the financing language was agreed to. Well, and that's because like, in most of our developers' agreements, the developer pays for everything, and they they pay for it. And we don't borrow any money. But we we do borrow the money, and some then they pay us back sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then the residents pay us back their special assessments. Mm -hmm. But we still have to borrow the money, mm -hmm. and that's where that comes yeah, in. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. No, I, and I share those and that's same views. my biggest concern yeah. is but I, I guess uh, I, I share Sandra's point is the public voted on it I would be hard-pressed to say that this board should rescind it without at a minimum a public hearing on it and to get a lot of input from the from the people of this this village what you know a lot of comment and discussion as to as to what some of the issues are with it, and see what see what their input would be. Um, I think it may. I think we'd have looked at it from a legal point of view, and I think it is possible for the board perhaps to rescind it without. It, it's legal for us to vote on it and decide after after a period of time, after using it for a period of time, that we can rescind it. I, I wouldn't say that I would I would agree with that. But I think it's possible to do. But my, my point is, is I think we need some public interaction here before we go too far down that road. Well, I think when you do an ordinance, whether it's to put it in place or mm -hmm. rescind, a lot of them in this type yeah. are public hearings. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with another going and doing another election and a referendum because, again, it, it it's a lot of emotion and mm -hmm. the fact the facts are the facts and if we have things that need to be taken care of we got to be able to do yeah. it no it is restrictive on a maintenance mm -hmm. point of view it's dangerous there are things that could happen to our sewer systems that might cost more than $150,000 and we would be we'd be out of luck trying to get that thing done in a, in a timely fashion. 
In an emergency situation, we can go ahead and do, if you had what you just described as a major sewer problem, mm -hmm. then you take care of that immediately. I think that's, if I remember correctly, that's way out, that's out of that restriction. You I have to know. do something it like is. that. It is? I don't think so. I don't know. I, spending money. Well, if there's sewer water running down your street, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have somebody come in and take no. care of it yeah. immediately. The reality There's a health yeah, hazard there. Yeah, and, and we, the answer is that would be taken care of, and we have the means with which to do that. In fact, I mean, if you look at the last four years, you know, we we, we had the one problem which everybody said you know would never happen, which is literally all three pumps that carry the sewage mm -hmm. across the Mount Loop, they all went out simultaneously. And even during the debate over this original uh, uh, ordinance. So I said, well, what would we do if you know if that went out and if that cost more than 150,000? Well, what we found out is replacing all those pumps cost about 50. Now, it's unlikely that we'd ever experience that again. But you say, what could really happen? I mean, I don't know that like everything from the north end of Helen's Street to the south end, I mean, even 10, 10 years down the road, I mean, could they all blow up at the same literally fail at the same time. No, those are all new yeah. systems that are in that right now, so don't no, worry about that. Well, then take, take 4th Street or 3rd Street. I mean, are they all going to blow literally to the yeah. point where they're all coming up? It's not the people's individual oh. systems. Um, you know, couldn't, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know to, to what extent the $150,000 number is too low to deal with emergencies. I don't know if we'd ever really get an emergency where we literally have to get something done in, in 15 days or 30 days. I don't know how realistic that right. is, very honestly. Okay, and you know, if we had to put a new roof on this place, it isn't going to cost 150,000 bucks. Okay. It's going to cost a lot of money, but it won't cost 150, I don't think. But there is a valuable yeah. lesson here, too, and that is that we don't let a street go as long as some of those streets over in St. Croix Station have gone with minimal attention to them. Now, those roads will get fixed, they'll be patched. Uh, they'll be made usable. They'll be made so that we can run a plow over them. Uh, they'll be fixed because right now, I think you'd agree with me, they're dangerous. Okay. And uh, then what we need to do is make well, it sure... It the traffic speed down. I'll bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what, what the lesson that we've gotten from this is let's take care of our infrastructure, and by that I mean the roads as well as everything else. Um, on a somewhat routine basis so as not to incur the necessity of going to the public to find out can we fix our streets. I think the larger lesson is that I, I find that the whole referendum thing to be uh, to be um, I think it reflects uh, people's attitude that somewhere along the way they weren't listened to. And so something got enacted to uh, uh, under what guise, you know, we're going to put a spending limit. I think it was something to shortcut um, ultimate board action, which I don't fault. My fear is, is it's, I, I don't view it as, a, as, a, as the typical way for this type of municipal government to operate. And there's always a backlash and the pendulum swings. And right now we're at an extreme, and as Joe said, he's concerned about down the line. I can almost guarantee us somewhere down the line, as this changes, that thing is going to change back to the way it was before, because it's not moderate. And um, if you're at all interested in, in keeping a referendum in place, um, it would be my suggestion to, to modify it so that you can conduct business in a somewhat normal manner, not fix and and. I'm only using St. Croix Station Road as an example because it's a recent example. I don't care about anything else up there. Um, but it's a good example. It's a perfect example. Now we, because a lot of people voted not on that and on, for emotional reasons. The road has to get fixed. Do I care if it gets fixed? Not really. Personally, I could give a damn. But it, it's part, why do we sit at these meetings and talk with the engineers, hire them, and try to do a good job when ultimately it gets sent out to vote and it gets shot down on the whims of people who are carrying some baggage with them to, these, to, the, to the election booth? You know? I don't want to, you know, why should I even show up at a meeting? 
So I, I don't think it's, I, I think in the long run, it's a piss poor way to, to run a small municipality. Pure and simple. Well, certainly one way to look at it, to, to kind of put a little different framework on it is, is it, does it represent the kind of language we would want to leave for future boards and residents? I think it does with modifications. Yeah, I'll admit, I, and, and you can, and, I, and I, I, I can both agree and disagree with Mark. I can come down on both sides. I happen to like the idea of the referendum concept when you start talking about you know, clearly something like the Village Hall edition. I thought that was just, that's just a perfect, uh, perfect case of where you can do it. Um, it's not to say you couldn't do uh, so-called informal, but nevertheless binding referendums as well. You know, as a municipality, I know some of the municipalities around us. You know, as we've talked about this issue, you know, some of them have said, you know, if they're going to take issue X before they act on it, they would rather do a referendum to find out how people feel on it. Um, that's really, I'm, I'm, I'm personally not. Concerned at all about the impact on Sacred Heart Station, uh, and more concerned with you know, two years, five years, ten years down the road. Is it, is it as Mark described it, a moderate, a type of policy that allows a, a, the next set of board of trustees to manage effectively? I mean, I, I, ideally, I just soon have some other board even take care of deal with this issue, and I, and I, and I could just <laughs> sidestep it. Um, you know, Mark wanted to put it on the agenda, maybe a touchy issue, well, so be it. You know, we, we get paid to deal with touchy issues. Uh, and so I put it on the agenda. So it doesn't bother me to deal with it. Uh, yeah, I hope I, I, I'm not casting any aspersions or anything. I'm just no, looking at it. No, it's, it's, I would say if by the end of the year, if we, if somebody came up with an idea, I would be pleased. I, I, no, just, mm -hmm. I just feel it needs to be mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. regardless, and I, and I know I know some of the awkward positions out there, but I don't think I don't think it's that awkward. Because uh, once it's on the table, everybody gets the chance to explain, and I think it has a lot of validity. Um, it, there's a lot of good points to it, mm -hmm. and I think it'll carry some historical perspective for future boards, regardless of what happens. Even if it got overturned tomorrow, for example, there'll be the reference to a referendum period, mm -hmm. and. When I indicated it's a, uh, not such a good way to run a municipality, I'm going to speak a little extreme on that because I, I um, just for some emotional emphasis. But you know, the Village Hall edition uh, was a good example of where a referendum was. We got to see where everybody felt on it, on mm -hmm. the deal, and we had to, uh, like you said earlier, we had to pay attention to what we were doing. It forced us to maybe do a little better job of pr preparation than we may have before. We got to see a heck of a slideshow from George, <laughs> and I don't know if we would have got a chance to see that before. But and, and, and it took some time, and we got it out there. And whether it was one vote or a hundred, it, it passed. And but I was concerned too on something like that because there are a lot of issues down here. A lot of people aren't aware of. Sure. But at the same time, um, you know, those are the the gives and takes in the whole thing. I'm just mm -hmm. looking to get a little more. Uh, back if we can with some, some modification that referendum and just a little bit of background on the municipality that we modeled this from was Mount Horb and um, the reason that they had put theirs in place because they had built a library and it was there was a disagreement of where that library should be located and so then they, they put this referendum in place and theirs is at a million dollars and they've gotten rid of theirs and theirs was a million dollars. Um, any other comments or suggestions for how to proceed? If not, uh, I, I'm glad that you that you raised the issue. I, I agree with you. I think it needs to be discussed. Well. I'm gonna. But I, I don't know what quite what to do with it going forward. I didn't have any idea. It, it, it only. I'm, I'm gonna throw this up. Uh, is would it be worth? Would it be suitable to send it to say public welfare, have it on their agenda, let them decide if they maybe develop a 
uh, a small citizens committee or a committee and talk about it, maybe hold a couple meetings and see, test the water, maybe look at some language or, or do a little prep work with it, if they could fit it into their schedule. <laughs> well, I, I think for a lot of us, I, you know, Jim's new, Colleen's new on the board, or relatively, and Sandra's been on before, but I, I think there's, if nothing else, do a little research and look in to see what the possibilities are. And or, I'd even go so far as to say as I trust, I, I, I know they're bright and can think of our creative is look into it and, and see what might work. Maybe we have a, 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 a public, what do they call it, a town meeting or something like that, just see what the general consensus is. I don't think we're faced with anything uh, mm -hmm. that needs a immediate correction, but I, like I said, mm -hmm. to, to go down the line with this and to run into another situation, I think is going to create a backlash where then you may eliminate the entire referendum process. If we can modify it and get it workable, maybe we'll put something into place that is that will really work down the line and everybody will be thankful for. Mm -hmm. I, I do have one question that George brought up and uh, not knowing the exact answer. If there was a natural disaster that came through, it would be a flood or a tornado, and before federal funding or state funding kicked in and we had to uh, step up to the plate, do we have that ability currently or would that have to go through a referendum to address also? Uh, I it, think I'm going to just speculate since that's yeah. a speculative question. One of the reasons why all municipalities carry what's called an undesignated reserve dollar amount mm -hmm. um, is to handle totally yeah. unexpected emergencies like that. Well, I'm assuming that's where the dollars would come from. Now, would that, would that constitute a capital project? And the answer is it, it, it well might. I wouldn't define that as a capital project. <laughs> capital project is something you plan for. Well, we don't plan for point. disasters. And when it comes to things like sewer and water and anything that relates to that, to me that's a public health issue that needs to be addressed immediately. Um, Mark, would, as a, your, our disaster um, <laughs> rep emergency <laughs> management <laughs> representative, right? Um, do you have any insight on, what, on if there was a, the type of a situation that Jim just described? Well, I think Larry probably hit it on the head for, for the sh a short period of time that that funding would have to come from the reserves, but then meets the criteria for the state and, of course, the federal level, that all that would be reimbursed. And I, I think that would be the easiest. And then I also agree with yours that I don't, I personally wouldn't believe that that would be a capital project. I mean, obviously, there would be infrastructure rebuilding, those types of things. But again, it's not something that you look ahead and, and plan for and, and budget it for. So, um, it, it would be covered. And I, I believe I heard uh, uh, the attorney mention, too, that it, some insurance, you know, depending on what type of items were damaged, a lot of private insurance for the, the Residents as well as the insurance for the village would cover portions of that as well. So. But you wouldn't want to find that your hands are totally tied in, in matters that need decisions, which I think is what you're talking about. Last question? <laughs> Not anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been spending, I just was looking at some of the things with respect to uh, how we could change this ordinance. This is, if it's direct legislation, it's what's called the charter ordinance, which requires that you have a charter ordinance to uh, amend or repeal that. But what I haven't found the answer to is there's different procedures for enacting a charter ordinance. And so the question in my mind still is whether you have to go back to the electors to enact another one or whether the mm -hmm. board could do that. And so I, looked, I was able to log into the office and go to the league site because they've got that. Um, we've got that resource, and it, the, the opinion that they referred to doesn't really address that issue. So okay. the, the, statute, the statute does say that uh, uh, they can't be vetoed by the mayor if it was a city, uh, and then there can't be a repeal or amendment within two years, which is all fine because we're kind of beyond that point. But then the last sentence says the common council or village board 
may submit a proposition to repeal or amend the ordinance or resolution at any election. Well, that's ambiguous to me because is that implying that you then must go back to an election to do that or, you know, or not? So I'll just have to, I'll look at it and probably talk to them. Right. Well, I kind of got the gist of it. To the extent that there was any kind of change we proposed that you know, would the board do it or would we go back to the to the residents? Preference seems to be to go back well, to since the residents. We aren't going to decide anything tonight. Would it be amenable to 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 uh, give, um, say, public welfare the charge of at least researching the latitudes of that ordinance? Would you be willing to sure. do that? In addition to what the attorney can provide? Or? Yeah. Uh, or yeah. For, I mean, for example, yeah, if there's some additional information, he could give it to you. Mm -hmm. And then oh, yeah, you I'm guys could at least have, when you're at a board, have a, a segment of your uh, uh, update being involved that. Sure. Okay. Right after garbage. <laughs> or garbage is fine. Good enough. <laughs> Maybe this isn't the same category. Huh? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we will move on. Plan commission. Thank you for uh, being uh, willing to do that. Uh, plan commission recommendation. Um, I don't think anyone's here for plan commission. We don't believe we have a chair update unless. What? They, didn't, they didn't have a meeting less in December, so there's no minutes here. Okay. Okay, Finance Committee. The uh, Finance Committee recommended uh, I get there. I'll get there. We recommended paying our bills. We were going to approve December 9 That's what I was looking for. Is that your motion? That was my motion. Okay. Yeah. So the motion to pay the bills from Joe, Mark, you said you yeah, will second that, okay. yes. Are there any questions on the uh, the bills for December? Okay. Uh, seeing none, then we'll uh, vote on that. We'll do a roll call. Cawthorn? Yes. Uh, Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Jim? Yes. Yes, George. George, yes. Okay. Uh, the Hudson Area Senior Citizen Center. The uh, village has always donated thousand dollars to the Senior Citizen Center. The Finance Committee is recommending that we do that again for 2007, and it's in the budget. So I would make that motion. Second. Are there questions or comments? All right. Seeing that, we'll do a roll call. Start on this end. Sandra? Yes. Kim? Yes. George? Yes. Joe? Uh, yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Larry? Yes. Uh, the next two C and D capital projects, equipment funding, discussion, possible action, and solicitation of loan bids. Uh, both those items kind of go together. Uh, members of the finance committee already have this handout. It's not really an eye test, but it looks like one. And it, it's it's an, uh, it's, a, it's a reference document. Did you go to the board room? Did you have one? Yes, I did. Okay. Who else? Okay. Did you guys have one? Sandra, did you The purpose of this, the reason I put these things together each year when we do, you know, at about this stage, we've already approved the budget for 2007, which includes the capital projects, okay? And so that's, and that's a part of the budget process. Now, as we go forward, it's okay, now we're going to do project A, A, B, or C. Um, what we need to do is identify, okay, what is that project? What's it going to cost? Do we have any funds set aside? For example, we've got the police car and related equipment. Uh, 
it, uh, original budget call for that to add up to about uh, uh, 30,700. We had 9,000 9, to carry forward, which means um, we need to borrow some amount of money, uh, probably in the amount of 22,343 to do that project. Then we had another lesser project of 3,500, the public works equipment. Um, so the question becomes one of what should be the financing terms for that? So if you could combine these two, it's roughly $26,000 so for the squad card, the amount that we need to borrow, plus the thirty five hundred. So I usually put these together so at least both the finance committee as well as the board can look at it and say, yeah, that makes sense, or no, it doesn't make sense at all, that's stupid. Okay. Uh, now for both of these, uh, we said the expected life, the life expectancy is four years or more for the one and could well be you know, five years or even longer for the other equipment. Um, and, and what I just threw out for purposes of discussion was to say, okay, those, that 26000 should probably be borrowed and repaid in uh, over a 24-month period. Okay. Now keep in mind when we say 24 months, uh, what we would then do is an authorized glory to go out and solicit bids for money, she gets that back, we approve that, so okay, now here's the money. Okay. Um, the actual payments don't occur until 2008 and 2009, so that's the two year period that we're talking about. Okay. And then I also look at it and say, okay, well, what would those payments be ballpark? You know, it's about 11,000, round number is probably 12,000 a year. Um, yeah, that's about right. No, yeah. 12, probably 16,000 a year because that then affects the 2008-2009 uh, total revenue requirements for the village. So you're trying to, we're, so we're trying to look at a, a variety of things here. So the issue in front of the house tonight is uh, we've already done solicitation of bids for the squad car, um, and there's a recommendation on that, uh, which we'll be discussing later. But what we usually do is just authorize the administrator to go out and solicit loans in a dollar amount not to exceed, like say 26, 20, 29,000, get, get close to what we anticipate. <coughs> uh, and then she comes back with that information. And we pick the banking vendor and away we go. Um, so the first question is for the, what we're anticipating or what we're trying to approve tonight is uh, borrowing some amount of money, the terms of which the administrator needs to know before she can go out and solicit. Okay. So the question is, does 24 months make sense? Should it be more? Should it be less? And that's, that's really the discussion when you combine these two issues together. Um, so we'd be borrowing enough to cover item one on this list, which is the police car and the related equipment, which uh, minus the 9,000 carryover is 22,343. The other equipment is 3,500, so I'll just quickly add that up. 3, 4, 8, 5, 25,843, so let's round that to 26,000. That's humanical as a number for your purposes. For a total number? Yeah. I have 35. I have 35. 2,200, 21.5 for the car, 2,000 for the light bar, 8,200 for the data. Yeah, but you got 9,000 carryover. That's it has nothing to do with it. That's that's going to be used to equip the car. We still need the 21. Correct. The car, the 9,000 is to in addition to the 21,000 loan. So it's about 30,000 total spending. It, we had 9000 It can also be put forward for the capital expenses. already has $9,000 removed from it. Oh, it does? Yes. Because we couldn't put it in for a capital project of 30000 but we borrowed 30 for a cap of 9 At least right. that was the way we discussed it. So we just put in that, that final number that we needed in order to complete the car. So just purchase the car and get the new play bar for that car and then to give it a change over from one squad to another. Oh, so okay. See. Spoken. It's already been applied. Right. So the number we're looking at is 31,343. Oh, okay. Is that correct? And if you add the confined space, I don't have 
equipment oh, okay. too. Did you add the uh, confined number four? Did you add that into that? No. Okay. What I noticed on that one is that that says life expectancy five years. You want to add that in, with so that would be actually end up being four years. Well, the car's about four years too. So I mean. I no, guess. that's what I'm saying. So the confined space yes. would become four years. Yeah. You're saying both from a timing perspective in terms of buying. Yeah. It makes sense to combine these two capital projects okay. into one loan. Uh, so that was number one. And then secondly, you, you put down the life expectancy as kind of a uh, kind of a benchmark. So you want to add in the old PW side as well? Yes. So okay. in terms of authorizing or solicit dollars, it would be thirty. Would you say thirty-five? Thirty-five thousand two hundred. I just rounded the car to twenty-one five. Oh, I got you. Okay. So what's the total number again, Gloria? Thirty-five two hundred. And then my other question is that Jim brought up, uh, and it, I know we're going to discuss it a little bit later, is the architect's agreement. Am mm -hmm. I going to need to borrow, get authorization to get a partial on the, is that architect's agreement got to be paid or need to be paid up front, or is there a certain amount due within 30 days after we sign it? Uh, if I remember correctly, and... Public safety helped me out on this. Uh, as I understood, it was going to be, we'll be getting a monthly bill. And I don't, do you remember what that number was? No, but I think mm -hmm. you better just start getting set up for something like a construction loan, like any other yeah. project. Mm -hmm. going. So if you have to withdraw funds on a monthly basis, you can. Okay, so then we should also be authorizing the village administrator to do what is called item number three here, which is, you know, the village hall. You want, to, you want to add two and three together there? Yes. Yeah, both of them is 20 years, so. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Let, let's just go back to uh, where, where we started off. Uh, I was I was working off the assumption that it made sense to combine for borrowing purposes. Mm -hmm. Items number one and number four, okay? And five? Um, Actually, I'm sorry, I, we didn't. We discussed this at finance. Um, the uh, land reclamation and mm -hmm. the siren, we're not going to do anything with until April. Oh, okay. Sorry. It does say that for the architect payment due within 30 days, once a month from signing. Thank you. Okay, so the bottom line is we are going to need the funds, as Mark mentioned. Okay. Because right. Be more than the okay. So in terms of, um, I'm not trying to create a motion, but rather just to you know, set the stage for motion, we would need to authorize Gloria to go solicit two loans. Uh, one would be in the amount of $35,200 that would be repaid in 24 months, i.e. 2008-2009. And then also to solicit funds. My suggestion to do is get a vote to go to call several banks and ask them what sort of package, tell them what our situation is and see what kind of package you can arrange for. No, I'm thinking, we had said that we would build, the project would cost, was it, was it 760? Was that the number That's in the referendum? That's amount not to exceed 760. Not to exceed, which would also be offset by the amount of dollars we already have. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. So which the, the, net of that, the net of that is 621. Right. Okay. So is that... So to me, that would be the dollar amount that she would then contact, most likely the, the state as well, is borrowing money currently on 20-year projects at 5.5. At least that was the rate today. Could change tomorrow. I'm going to go back. Uh, I was on the impression that $35,200 loan would be for f well, paid out back over four years, not just in two years. Uh, the, the motion from finance was two years. Sorry, I was going by the printed, what was, what was printed here. 
Oh, over yeah. here. Yeah. So life oh, expectancy. Okay. So it's misleading. Oh, oh, okay. Life expectancy versus organization. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. Take the half life. Half life. Half life, life of Ford. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just had a question. In looking at the, the item that Eric provided to me, uh, you were talking that you added a thousand dollars to the car that you had you went from twenty thousand five hundred to twenty one five. Well, the, the anyway. issue statements are all at twenty one thousand. Back the issue statements that you gave me. Twenty thousand five hundred. Oh, so, so that's what part of the nine thousand was. Right. And the rest of the nine thousand dollars would go for the. the well, the only issue the statement I have is for the one that was provided to public safety. Okay. Well, there, there were two. There was an issue statement related to the capital project, mm -hmm. which is the twenty thousand. Okay. And then there's an issue statement to select. So take off a thousand. Yeah. So I guess I get to see it. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's a good correction. So the car is really so the car and the LED and the uh, mobile computer th those numbers that were in the capital budget those are the numbers we should be using to authorize Gloria to go out and solicit dollars. Correct. Okay. Which shows here is thirty thousand seven hundred, and I guess we're adding on that four. Yep. So do you come up with thirty four two? Good. Okay. So thirty thousand seven and thirty five hundred. Thirty-four two. Yeah, we're not done yet. Okay. And I guess I'd clarify in that issue statement that you're authorizing me to purchase for capital. Where is Tom? Where that can sort of pull this number out of the air? This is two years. Oh, yeah. uh, not yes. really based on anything other than the fact it's nice to get ahead of things. Oh yeah, right. sure. And, uh, Construction. You know, I'm not in finance committee, so I'm coming up here to really sort of see what's going on. It sure makes sense to me. Going to need that because you don't want to be doubling up on. Police cars. Okay. We got one that's falling apart. Reasonably clear. In fact, that's what we're doing. That one won't take care of before you have to engage yeah. in the truck on that. We've got a squad car, we've got equipment, we're buying a piece of equipment for the public works. Uh, the amount we need to borrow is 34.2. Okay, slightly less than we had before. Okay. So, not just in the interest of keeping them separate, I will make a motion that says that the board. Authorizes the village administrator to solicit from local uh, and state uh, lending authorities uh, a loan amount, or a loan in the amount of thirty-four thousand two hundred dollars, uh, to be repaid in full by the end of two thousand, with, with payments in two thousand eight and two thousand nine, with complete. Completion of payments by the end of 2009. Second. For capital equipment. For capital equipment. Uh, questions on that? If not, then we'll uh, vote on that with roll call. Uh, Joe? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Jim? Yes. George? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay. Now, on the other one, with respect to the uh, uh, Village Hall project, I'll do a similar kind of motion that says we authorize the administrator to solicit uh, construction and or capital type loan in the amount not to exceed 621000 uh, to be repaid over a 20-year period to uh, cover the cost of the village addition. How's that sound? Second. Oh, Reread that amount again. The amount? 
Do you want to reread the motion? Nope. We'll just Gloria it. gave it to me. I just wanted to confirm what I had written down. 760 minus 139. Construction and or what type, even two types of loans there? Financing, you just call it. Construction, okay. yeah. Capital financing. Number, this number. I mean, that was that was obviously the referendum number. That's the number I remembered. I I know that was the number that was pulled, but um, projecting out to the end of the year, I know that it's going to be 146,000 okay, so of interest. So it's all right. It's going to be less than. So we may, it may be less. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't overshoot it. No. Okay. I'd rather be conservative. Okay. Any further questions, discussion on that issue? If not, we'll vote on the motion to borrow the 600 or authorize Glory to go out and solicit bids for 621000 Start over here. Sandra? Yes. Jim? Yes. George? Yes. Joe? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? I do. Okay. Okay. Public works. had a rather lively meeting on December the uh, 14th. The minutes are in, in your booklet. Uh, just to give you a quick rundown, we did talk at length with, or we did have asked, we invited Todd from Elliott Architects to come in. And Todd went through the document AIA document B151-197 as he, we requested that he did, that he would do, and he did. Did a great job, and uh, we as a public safety committee feel very comfortable with recommending uh, this contract uh, for your approval. And uh, I believe this would be an issue statement similar to the one that we had for the, uh, the other contracts. So I would like to make a motion. I would ask my colleagues to feel free to edit my motion that we accept the contract as presented from Elliott Architects for the building addition and renovation. Second. Okay, discussion. I take it you're comfortable with that. I realize the language, that it's a very, very lengthy contract, but having now spent the time to sit down with the architect and the committee, you're collectively comfortable that the language is okay. Yes, we are. In fact, what we discovered as Todd went through it, there are many uh, sections in this contract uh, that were written to protect us. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they are looking out for themselves, which I would hope they would do, uh, but also to protect us as a, uh, the other side. Uh, there are details of our discussion in the minutes from public safety. You'll see them at the uh, bottom of the first page, goes on to the second page, where it says Village Hall Edition, and you can see the items that were of particular interest to us. until the board has a chance to uh, digest this so that we can vote on it. Okay, you look at the uh, you, you, you look at the contract last month if I'm not mistaken, Tom. Mm -hmm. so you're comfortable with it. Okay. Uh, we did uh, compare the numbers that we found in there with the numbers that we used when we did our objective analysis and they are consistent okay. 
there were no surprises in that. Our concern was more with the other wording. We're okay with it. Good. Good. All right. Any other questions on that issue? If not, then we'll vote on uh, accepting and approving the architect's uh, agreement. Um, and we'll do that with a roll call, just to be cautious. Uh, start over here, Sandra. Yes. Good. Yes. George. Yes. Joe. Yes. Colleen. Yes. Mark. Yes. Larry. Yes. Along the lines of the uh, project, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to the middle of the uh, back of the first page, uh, and that is uh, Mark proposed an ad hoc committee uh, be organized. And while we don't feel it's necessary to bring it to the board for a vote, uh, we just want to draw your attention to it that one is being formed, and uh, that we would ask anyone who has in suggestions that they be uh, funneled, I guess, through Gloria. We don't have a chairman yet of this committee, of this ad hoc committee. So the question would be, if people do have input, how should it be forwarded to the uh, ad hoc committee for consideration? And since Gloria is on that ad hoc committee and she is centrally located here, this does not necessarily <coughs> mean that she, well. Wait a second, I'm, we have an ad hoc committee? Mark Zappa moved to recommend, oh. Yeah, but you just said you're. I didn't uh, think I we needed to have board approval for that. Well, ad hoc committee. I think we got to start with, you know, we've got, we got three entities involved here. We've got the board, we have the public safety, mm -hmm. and now we have an ad hoc. Okay. And what I would like to have some discussion about is what's the role of each of those three? As I know, if I recall, the original suggestion to have an ad hoc was to recognize that there may well be some construction-related mm -hmm. issues, as there are any kind of project like this, where somebody needs to get together and agree to make a change or approve something, like today or tomorrow or later. Okay. And we sure haven't got time to wait for a board meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that was part of the role of ad hoc? That was how I saw it, was public safety having nothing to do with it anymore, per se. The ad hoc committee acting at, at handling. Um, so who's managing, I understand. The chair, what I, how I saw it was, up, I saw it, I was gonna, I would like to, I wanted, would have liked to have seen George be chairman of the ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, um, uh, see that. Uh, heads of, of departments, <laughs> From the village beyond there, Gloria, <laughs> Mark Rickert, and Mark Ekblad. And then there are two citizens who um, agreed, or I had asked to be on, if they'd be on there, Gene Shefflin and Wally Gregerson be, you know, agreed to be on there. That's, what is it, six people? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have somebody from the board, two citizens, and our staff members to handle the construction process and then report to the board like any other committee would. And if they have a meeting, then you know they don't need to post it per se, but if you have any input, go down there and, and, and deal with it at that basis. I don't know when we'd be talking about it at the board level. You know, did what? you see that window was cracked or something? I mean, I don't know where. No, I just see it. I, I see it as updates. I'm looking yeah. at it in terms well, of who's then, managing the project. Exactly. Like, for example, the sooner we get it together, the better, because the first pay request from the architect, they get a chance to look at it, see what went over it, and they give it their thumbs up, if you will, and goes to finance, and then somebody got to take a look at it. So, so is the ad hoc committee, uh, we all, in finance we start talking about the approval process with respect to uh, the expenditures related to the building. Okay. And whoever the electrical contractor eventually says, okay, I'm, I'm, I have completed 25% of the project, sure. so therefore here's my bill for 25%. Okay. Well, if... And, and just what should that process Well, what be? I'd do is if, if you got some pay requests coming in from them, if you're on the finance committee, I'd be looking at them for a budget and seeing how things are going. You get an update. What's, 
what's going on here? We have X amount to spend. Are we staying in budget? Are we getting X amount done? But we wouldn't have any idea as to whether or not the work was ever was even done and in good. finance. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, but that's what you're asking for the update. Yes. So before you say yes, we'll pay for it, you get an update. You can say no at the finance. Sure. You well, can okay. say no, we're not going to pay this bill because I don't think the answer you came up with, George, is very good. Okay. So, I mean, it's kind of like Kevin, you know, it, it, it's... All right, so this committee then... You're obviously yeah, they can't approve it. They can submit it for approval. Okay. But then there better be somebody there, and George is on as a board member at the meetings. No, I just wanted to make sure there was a collective understanding as to who's managing this project, okay, and who's looking at the bills as they come in and saying, yes, this is uh, this bill is yeah. legitimate given the work we've observed. That yeah. The architect has signed off. Uh, could well be the building inspector has yeah. signed off. The ad hoc committee, and then and the, the ad hoc committee board. has looked at it. Yeah. Okay. This is definitely not something that one individual is going to look at and approve. This is definitely going to be the work of six people. Uh, it's a continuous check and balance. Okay. Yeah, for example, I can't see the Finance Committee paying any related bill unless it went to the ad hoc committee first. Okay. So if somebody wants to, you know, send one in, I mean, they, I mean the contractor and people associated will know the, the channel. Mm -hmm. and there's but I think we should get it started fairly soon. Will so. there be a, the architect or a general contractor who will be kind of passing that to the ad hoc and saying yeah. that yeah. this is okay to pay? Isn't, kind the of like? sure. Isn't the process, the general contractor is doing the work. They get so much done, they send their bill to the architect. The yeah. architect the architect's says, okay. okay, yeah. this he, percent's okay. He, he's there to justify yeah. it, so he'll, be, he'll probably come to that meeting with the pay request. Mm -hmm. You got any questions, go over it, or you know, this is that big of an addition. Take a little walk around yourself, you'll see. If they say they put in a foundation, I don't think they're going to slip that by you. <laughs> you know. In fact, we did talk to Todd about this, and he did indicate to us, yes, that's part yeah, of that's his part, role. That's part of their role. Is to that's ensure yeah. that so they the, go through the that. contractor's doing what he's been contracted to do. Well, we talked about just very briefly, what, what, is, who is, the, what is the purpose of the ad hoc committee? Why does it exist? What, what is its role? I see the ad hoc committee as a buffer between the architect and the board. I see it as something as a as a as a mechanism to be able to react um, uh, uh, appropriately for this building process, and also to get input from uh, to have uh, not some other eyes looking at it. But we it has to you have to react we have to react to things and mm -hmm. given our current mm -hmm. situation. No, I like the idea of the ad hoc. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I like I like that idea. But as like far the as structure and the yeah. residence you've got on it. You know, the, the architect, um, uh, he'll look through everything because he'll make sure that the job's done to code. Uh, you know, if people are using the right material, that's, that's, that's his job. That's mm -hmm. the, the building inspector will only come in at the tail end of things or periodically check, but you can't count on the building inspector to make sure it's going upright. It looks like Tom has something he wants well, to inject here's, here. Here's my concern is that, and what I was thinking of the ad hoc was, this is a remodel project, so you, you always got stuff that you don't expect. And it's a week from, the, we just had a board meeting, the next week that comes up and somebody says, we gotta have a change order here because this isn't gonna work mm -hmm. according to the way it was on the plan and we need to make a decision so the project can keep going forward. They get together the ad hoc committee, they look at it and they say yay or nay, or do it some yeah. other way or whatever. And then Remodel or do it, not yeah. guarantee and this it committee can be, a plan. This committee yeah. can be called at a moment's notice. And I they don't have the notice. technology. <laughs> yeah, right. He's, they're, they're ready and willing to go there in the blocks. <laughs> I can spell it. Right <laughs> but not, let me just make sure we all understand what Tom just described, but what, what, the, what the board is doing is delegating to God out committing the ability to make those kinds of decisions. I just want everyone to mm -hmm. understand that. Right. So basically, the ad hoc committee will be a decision-making entity that has full power to make building, construction, decisions, change orders, any aspect to the project, and ultimately then sure. will report to the finance committee. Now they also have the ability to put it to a complete stop and wait for a board meeting too to see what everybody's opinion might be. That's a good be. point. That's sure. a very good point. So I mean it, it's just somebody has to be able to react. Sure. 
Does does a committee like this ever have a chair and a co-chair? I mean, like Gloria is so connected with everything that goes on up here and in Georgia's too. But is it ever either? Could it be an either or? Well, I don't think it's. Either or would that make things no, messy? I think it's, you have one chairman just for you have your mm -hmm. titular head. We were talking a little <laughs> earlier, and, and Gloria is so connected with, with what's that going on, and, as is George. But just thought I'd throw that out there to stir the pot a little. Yeah, we'll play. Just, <laughs> here, Jim, okay? You're doing a good job. <laughs> Keep stirring. Well, the original motion and what was that was in your uh, your minutes was to establish an ad hoc committee consisting of the following people who would have you know, responsibility for managing this construction project. Yeah, I call it a management construction committee or management, project management. Yeah, I don't like the yeah. ad hoc. So project project, project management is good. Yeah. And with the individuals on the committee, I think it covers all of the necessary bases. Oh, I'm very good. I'm very pleased with the, mm -hmm. with, the, with the people that are on it. I mean, it makes sense. Okay. So I, I'd be comfortable giving them mm -hmm. the power to make some decisions. One of the issues that we would have, uh, and I appreciate that uh, your input, and I appreciate Mark's confidence. Uh, but if you were to have uh, two or three board members on it, then every time you got together, you couldn't get together because, because you'd have to post it as a public meeting. Mm -hmm. And so, by only having one board member on there, that's not necessary. Is it just one or is it two? One. 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 We're not just smoking crack every night over there. <laughs> How did you get out of this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. He's got, he's got his own building project. Um, and the, the, that motion doesn't include Mark Eckblad, so he, it should be. It should stay. I, don't know. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Mark, didn't I? Oh. Mark Richard? All right. Oh, that's right, I man. That's. Uh, well, you're using that to make the next motion. So the motion then coming from public safety is to um, recommend uh, board approval of a construction management committee consisting of Trustee Klein, uh, Village Administrator Troster, Chief of Police Richard, and Supervisor of Public Works Ekblad, and uh, two residents at large. Gene Shufflin and Wally Gregerson, uh, who would collectively constitute the construction project, construction management committee, uh, and said committee will be responsible for the management, the construction management of the Village Hall addition project. Is that the motion that I? That's that's that uh, sounds like you got it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I'll throw that out as a motion. I'll second. I'll second that. <laughs> when Wally's wondering if he was going to get a half. <laughs> Hard half? <laughs> I'll second it. Colleen beat you to the point. <laughs> oh, he did? I did. <laughs> so we did change the name of it. Yes, yeah, it's Construction Pro Management Committee. Committee. Okay. Construction Management Committee. Any other comments, questions? I mean, we've already had some discussion. We had some discussions with finance just about some of the process, which we, we've now replicated here, which is you know, how do the bills come through, how do they get audited, how do we know that we are, in fact, acting in an appropriate fiduciary manner to protect you know, the expenditure of public funds. I think the answer is we've now got three people who are actually going to be looking at it. The general contractor, by definition, does. The architect reviews it. We might even ask Cedar Corp, God forbid, <laughs> to look at something. And then the, the ultimately it goes to, find it, to the uh, Construction Management Committee, and they will uh, oversee it. So I'm comfortable that at least there's appropriate uh, oversight of the expenditures. Well, it's something that you just said somewhat facetiously, but it does raise a question, and that would, what would Cedar Corp's involvement in the project be? Do we need to clearly define that or not at all? I'm not so sure you really have any defined role unless we ask them to do something. Okay. They could, not once you have an architect, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. I ask simply because they are village, the village engineering firm and because I want to make sure that we discuss that here tonight mm -hmm. so that there are no preconceived notions about 
Now, as far as I'm concerned, Elliot, I mean, the architectural firm that we have retained is the primary engineering driver on this project. And he then handles the construction. Well, once we let the bids, there will be a, uh, a general contractor who will have responsibility to make sure that the subs get their respective uh, things done on time and within budget. And I'm, I'm, I was being facetious about Cedar Corp, but you know, I believe that is the appropriate chain of command. Would you have any? Yeah, I typically that's the way it works with the architect. Yeah. I mean, the okay. only thing that could possibly transpire if there is, you know, there would be, be need to be some survey work to be done or some total sure. survey or some of those things, site specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Those numbers, those dollar estimates are actually part of that 760 estimate. I have some of that survey done. So. Yeah. Okay. okay, boss. All right. Um, any other comments on the creation of the construction management committee? I think, I think it's a good idea. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second, we haven't voted on it yet. Any other comments before I call for a vote? Okay. If not, all in favor of creating the committee as uh, uh, so described in the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Larry, <coughs> as you read over the uh, public safety minutes, there's one on municipal court. Is it your understanding that we do or do not need to uh, vote on that as a board? <coughs> is that an option or was that a mandate? Um, <coughs> go with the bail schedule. Mm -hmm. It is an option. So we don't have to vote on it as a board. No, it, it's an option. If it's an option, then we need to vote. Oh, okay. It's a very slight adjustment to the. Uh, but it's still an ordinance change, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, just don't, yeah. Is the. Uh, isn't, our, isn't our ordinance drafted so that we just match what the state is so when the state changes, we change also? I, I don't believe so. I, I recommend that we look at that and make that change so that then, because the state does periodically change it, and typically the municipalities follow what the state bond schedule is, and so I'd recommend that we, if we're going to make a change, that we change the our ordinance so that it always matches what the state has, and then as the state changes, we automatically change Well, it. my only comment on that, Tom, is that what the state does is it, it isn't there, Mark, if I remember reading that, it it's a range mm -hmm. and so what we're doing is picking numbers within that the ranges that they had mm -hmm. well, and that's why we have the num that's why we have the numbers that we do here because they fit within the range change from the state so the state change my thought on that would be is that i wouldn't get that specific i guess i would so the range for the state bonds bail schedule yeah. is larger than the range that we're picking is that what you're saying um we're picking a, a, a specific amount whereas the state gave us a range so we're picking an amount within that range do we even Again, need to i guess my recommendation would be is that you don't do that i mean that just takes away the discretion of the court when they're you know, doing it and i guess i would my thought would still stick with that we, we adapt the state bond schedule such that when that changes, ours changes, and if, if the court <coughs> wants to set a specific amount for various things, they can do that internally without without the board adapting and making. And that's where really I got on this conversation. Do we even need a motion mm -hmm. to do this? Because I don't think these fall into our list of fines and schedules. These are really the traffic ones, I assume. That's Mark, correct. Is yeah. that right? Well, yeah. for the most part, if we're but there were a couple others too, yeah. and we called. I'm not sure if they're called. 
If we're changing an ordinance at all. Uniform misdemeanor bail schedule. It needs to come back. I need to, build, to write the ordinance and come back, have a number, mm -hmm. okay. and be published. And okay, then would you work with Mark on? Sure. Uh, or, or maybe even, are we actually changing an ordinance? The change of, of our local ordinance? The change, the, the way that I understand tonight, or, or the change in that bond schedule, was just the fact that the state is now allowing up to, I believe it's $28 for the core cost, which then, of course, yeah. with all the other subsequent costs, increased that fine amount. Um, and, and I thought, when the judge and I had talked about it, there was something here relative to the fact that if there is a change in the bond schedule, that the judge must bring it to the board for approval. In our current ordinance, you're saying? Show. I'm sorry? In our current ordinance, it says that, is well, you're saying? That's my understanding okay. as to what he brought to me. I was just okay. reviewing that to try to see if I could find. It says language. in this, it says uh, code 90 1. Does that help? 90 1 is all the, is the traffic inferences. Mm -hmm. That just includes all state traffic laws and our municipal ordinances. It looks like 90 2 deals with penalties. I don't know if you want to take a look at that while we're sitting here. I can do that. When the range was 15 to 23, did we as a municipality have a fixed number of 23? That's what we have. That we do have a fixed number of 23. Correct. So looking at this, a person could say when the range was 15 to 23, we, we as a municipality chose 23. Now that it's gone from 23 to 25, we could elect to go to or 23 to 28, go to 28, since we were at the limit of it before. Just That would keep some, at least be uniform. Um, right. Tom is going to look at the ordinance quick and see if sir. it may well be adequate, mm -hmm. we don't have to change anything. I guess the only reason that I want to make sure that it's addressed tonight is because I have to provide my officers with the numbers put forward and sure. yeah. <laughs> I need to give can we come, can we come back to the court of That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll okay, come while, back. While they're that. pursuing that, we'll just move on yeah, to the discussion on the next <laughs> next title, the uh, next item on the agenda, which is wildlife management. I put that on there, George. Um, and you better, then you talk about it. Well, and the, and the only reason <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm, I'm done talking about them oh, quadrupeds boy, out in my yard. The only, the only reason. There. <laughs> no, I, I, the only reason I put it on the agenda is because I continue to get requests from residents who said, when are we going to deal with this deer herd issue? And I said, well, right now, we don't have any money in the budget to deal with it. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. So does that mean the issue is dead? And I said, well, I guess it depends on how you define dead. What I don't know is whether or not there's any, what, what if somebody was willing to come in here and do you know, some kind of deer herd shrinkage for us for no cost. Would you want to do that? Yeah. I think it's three. Uh, Is that a valid option? Uh, in fact, I've had someone make that offer. It's from a, I think a qualified firm. I'd have to, you know, we'd have to make sure they're qualified, but just assume for the moment that they're qualified. So long as you know, I just be concerned about the village liability is all. Yep. Uh, just assume for them, uh, yeah, and I'm not trying to, to nail you down here. I'm not, I'm not looking for a motion here. I'm looking more for the issue of do we, do we think we it's a problem? I mean, if we could, using lethal means, shrink the population of the deer in the village at little to no cost, would we want to do that? Would you want to proceed with that? I would recommend that we do proceed with uh, checking into uh, reducing the deer population. Yeah. What are you, Senator? I'm looking for a discussion. I'm not looking for a motion. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I love deer, but, you know, I stop for them every single morning. But it, it's a difficult issue to deal with. I know that there are some residents who would like us to definitely initiate le le lethal action immediately. The people who live right next door to those people, uh, one group is ambivalent about whether we do it or not, and then another one says, no, I don't want you to do it at all. But we've clearly had a large chunk of people coming from one area of the village down in Galahad saying, you know, we really need to do something. We had a group down from uh, Riverside saying the same thing. And we had the same thing from, from Helen Street. And I know that there's mixed feelings on that, even within that area. 
So you know, we've kind of laid it out with financial, and, and Mark had made the point once before, do I want to spend five to 10 grand a year shooting deer? And the answer is, I don't think we got that kind of money. I think, yeah, Mark okay. made a good comment. It's a nuisance problem, not a safety issue. Mm, yeah, in, I'm not so sure I would necessarily agree with that unilaterally. I think it is a degree of a safety issue. <laughs> Uh, certainly the people down the Riverside have said, you know, you come around there at 6 o'clock in the morning and as deer are crossing the street and they're not near the street lights, that's a safety issue because you're hitting the brakes and you're almost hitting them. And that's part of the whole safety issue is the car deer crashes. Okay. So is there a degree of safety there? I think there might be. Okay. Well, I wouldn't mind uh, shrinking the herd. I'll go on record as saying that. So we, we obviously have, we have too many deer. And I, I wouldn't, I would support thinning it somehow. I'd like for whatever that. that's worth. Go right ahead. on record saying I couldn't care less. No, I, I, <laughs> I, couldn't, I really couldn't care less. Wait till you hit a deer on your way out of here. Today. I've, hit, oh, yeah. I've hit deer. <laughs> I was uh, opposed to it before, but I think most of my opposition is related to spending money to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. I, I kind of like them, mm -hmm. but I'm not hearing all the complaints you are. Mm -hmm. So, if there's a, a cheap way to deal with the problem, I listen to it. I don't think there will ever become an issue where we fail to see deer running around, no matter how much we thin the population. We won't. We are going to see deer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The DNR is quite emphatic about us thinning the, her the herd is okay. Eradicating the herd is not okay. So the answer, you're absolutely right, Jim. Uh, we'll never, by law, eradicate the herd. <laughs> I was more concerned with what's, what's the board's sentiment on the whole issue if suddenly economics was not a big deal. Can you have some for pets? Changes a lot. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not going to require a referendum. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have a pig. <laughs> we didn't get our uh, PD involved. <laughs> okay, that's all I wanted to talk about on that issue. At the next meeting, you're going to let us know how we're going to do this for free. Some <laughs> of needles and pens. You're ready to do All right, we'll pine. The, uh, I've gone over this uh -huh. with Mark. The, what the judge is really looking at, there's two issues here. There's the uniform bond schedule for traffic, and that's the state, and the ordinance provides that we follow through. When state changes, we change. But then there's also a deposit with respect to other local ordinance violations, and that's what the judge wants to increase by five dollars so that he's in line to the increase was to the traffic stuff. Okay, so and we that, and, that's, and the ordinance does require that you get approval from the board. Right, and that's, and that's where he brought that forward, and, and under the 90 okay. percent, the ordinance is not there. It's under section 26-3, which basically talks about the deposit schedule for municipal ordinances other than traffic must be adopted by the board based on his, uh, I guess, suggestion or recommendation, and then posted at the clerk, clerk of court's office as well as the police department. So that obviously officers and what and the uh, clerk of court are both looking at the same, I guess, uh, okay. cheat sheet of what's okay. So, for so if we need to change the ordinance, then you and Gloria will have to work together to develop the appropriate. And I don't think what language, uh, unless he he feels different. I don't think I think the ordinance the ordinance is correct. I works think. with making the change as the state allows. Right. The ordinance oh, reference the ordinance to traffic. Changes what people have to pay for their traffic deposits for misdemeanors right. changes as the state statute changes. Yep, okay. And then the ordinance provides for other local things mm -hmm. that the amount is not set forth in there, it's just on the schedule. Uh -huh. And if the amount's going to change for the local ordinance for things other than traffic, that he makes a recommendation, which his recommendation is $5 increase mm -hmm. apparently, and that we have to approve that, the board has to. And so I think that we can do. The ordinance doesn't need to be changed. It's just whether you're okay increasing it by that. And for the most part, those types of, uh, just to give you examples, <coughs> disorderly conduct. It's not a traffic violation. It's a, I guess, a violation of, of state law, but then we've adopted an ordinance that makes it a lesser fine amount mm -hmm. to do those things relative to our municipal court. So those are the items that he can rec recommend. Does that explain it? Then, yeah, that's enough. 
Yeah, we got it. Then, what ordinance number did you say again? 26-3. 26-3. Yeah. Then I would ask Tom if our motion here that we made at public Absolutely. safety is adequate for a motion to be made here at the board to accommodate these numbers. I think that we should, yeah, the motion that's in with the committee was uh, adoption of Judge Wolfat's proposed bail schedule, and I would say for non-traffic matters. Okay. Because that's what he's related to. And for the traffic matters, it's just? The traffic matters, we've already adopted the, the state's bond schedule, and as that changes, ours changes, so we don't have to do okay. that. that that's the reason for this change, is because the state changed. Yeah. i got to raise a nit of, sorry. Uh, the notion of modifying this is not an agenda item coming out of public safety. For tonight's board meeting. No, so it's not on the agenda. Well, we got to go through this again. Yes, in February. Uh, all right, but perhaps what we'll be able to do, Mark, during our next public safety meeting on the 11th is to make sure we get the issue statement written in such a way that will be easily understood by everybody. and Then it'll be a little bit cleaner when we come before you in February. Just a one-line simple motion would be adequate, given the, the amount of discussion we have. Right, exactly, yeah. Okay, now moving on. Public welfare. Um, can I just ask a quick question? If the sure. chief happens to know the left top of his head, I was curious what the animal complaints were. Um, was there an incident right down for were they Were they strays? Just mm -hmm. public welfare? Typically, they're barking dog. Um, what noise? Right. Strays, I don't know. Well, I don't know. You, have, have you Most of the dogs can't fill out a form. they got to bark. No. Dogs can't be alarmed. The Yeah, there's four. Oh dear. Um, public welfare, we did not meet in November or December, so I don't have a report. We do have a, a comment that I think followed, followed the public welfare mm -hmm. review. Um, and that is, I've gotten a few complaints from my neighbors now that we have the nice sidewalk running down Helen Street. Um, I myself have, and this is kind of a personal complaint, I, I, I don't know if this is the best way to bring this up to the committee, but um, we have a lot of animal um, leftovers in our landscaping, which I have to clean up every week. And I've had other, other people complain that people are not picking up after their animals, letting their animals do their business in other people's yards and leaving it. And, and I think that's a... I, I don't know what to do about it. I think we have an ordinance. I know we do have an ordinance. <laughs> ordinance. I'm how not sure how, how to engage in enforcement. Or more maybe uh, let people know that there is a penalty for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> there is an ordinance on it, and I, actually it was addressed by one of the neighborhood watch groups. That there was a lot of problems. And I know that the park board has kind of taken a step with the help of the neighborhood mm -hmm. watch group to put up the little... I guess the doggy baggies in the little mm -hmm. in, the, in some of the parks, and that's that's kind of a long-term project that they'd like to get that incorporated throughout the village, so access mm -hmm. to those baggies is easier. Thinking that you know we're kind of in a society where the easier the better, that you're going to get more production out of people that uh, don't have to work as hard. Well, again, that probably doesn't relate to the most of the citizens here in North Hudson, but uh, for some it is. And I guess about the only thing we can really do to try to curb that problem be. You know, there was actually a letter written to the editor by several members of that neighborhood watch group, kind of as a to try to get people to to change their habits. Um, I guess the only other option that we would have is if you actually see somebody or see someone's dog and see them not take care of that problem, is to actually try to get a description if you know who that person is, and literally to call the police department and, and get a case started on that. Or run them over. Whether or not that's <laughs> going to change habits, um, we, we seem to have the reputation in North Hudson of the speed limit is 25 and you must abide by that and, and people have that feeling and I guess if we start uh, taking action or at least making people yeah. aware of that that ordinance yeah. that might be something I, I guess awareness is more what I'm looking for sure. rather than uh, enforcing you know 
know, the dog poop law. <laughs> But, uh, Very good. And in a lot of the areas, I mean, they are they are signed. I mean, most of or all of our parks, I think, there's signage related to that. Actually, I created a sign and put it in my own yard. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's, that's why I'm getting more. Now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, what size bags are in the park? What size bags? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> Wait a minute, Colleen can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought they were for Michelle picked them all up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring some back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, I, I do have an this is honest. This is honest. Now, don't laugh. But uh, is, is it possible to create an ordinance? And, and I, I'm sort of serious, but if you're walking a dog and you do not have the means, such would be a bag to pick up its feces, that you could get a slap on the wrist or something? Or... I mean, I know this sounds crazy, and don't laugh. Mark. Fortunately but enough, I think anything's possible, and I, and I think that's if this board decides to go that route, then you know we would obviously take action to, to enforce those ordinances. It would have to be a board decision, and just say, you yeah, know, so you don't. Well, you that's know. something I can go out and, and right, start right, right. I think that's going to come up right after we when we make plans to invade Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we just came off the deer topic, so. Yeah. I mean, but as this, uh, you know, it, it would make sense if you see how somebody out there and they don't have the means to pick up, you know, that they're, you know, ultimately going to be in violation. Let them over. And, and then I guess so you get the idea of well, what if their dog? I mean, they may be taking them out for exercise. What if their dog potentially would not, you know. Excrete their waste on somebody else's yard, and they wait till they get home or something. And so I think, yeah, yeah, well, I'm not going to go to the political ramifications <laughs> of that, but I think that there there will be a lot to discuss on that yeah, topic. No, I know. You know, but but it is. I think it's it's definitely something that I've heard a lot of complaints about. Um, more of an informal or informal version of kind of what what Sandra's talking about, where you, people just come up to you and say, you know, what can we do about this? Like again, a lot of what you're saying is that they don't want people fined, they don't want court, you know, situations where you have someone sitting in front of the judge saying, you know. Yes, Judge, I did allow my, my animal to defecate on someone's sidewalk or on the yard, um, you know, and kind of creating some time and expense on that part of it. But it is something of an informational point that, that people get, need to get out because I think come spring now, once all the snow melts, you're going to find those piles and instead of mm -hmm. It and is snow for those individual homeowners. When I walk my two dogs, I have three to five bags on me. And <laughs> Good. <laughs> and sometimes still oh, has not. You're walking around with a bag on. Is that what you're saying? Um, Glen Oaks and um, the Crest? no the the, the train Eagle. park. <laughs> yeah, that, that one's Glen Oaks, and then Eagle Woods. Eagle Woods. So Glen okay. Oaks and Eagle Woods so to start with for maybe this plan year. To walk around those two locations so that you, you can, can pick up a bag. Up. <laughs> and we'll be resupplying those as they. Yeah, the neighborhood watch is going to work on that. And I think that what kind of bags are they? Are they self closers? <laughs> I haven't looked at them that closely. Michelle took it. <laughs> did you have any other? Uh, <laughs> did, did, you, did, you, did you get enough input on this topic? I just, you know, I just wanted to get it out there for information and maybe get a little publicity on it. I guess I have a question. Will there be a welfare in January meeting? Uh, well, that's kind of up in the air because uh, we didn't have an agenda before. And I know you need to publish it. But I'm also, Jim's going to be out of town quite a bit, and so am I, or um, right in that area. So we can't nail down a date, so it may be better that we just go to a February meeting. Okay. Nothing else is pressing. All right. Moving on, Park Board. We didn't meet last month either, but we had something left over. Um, the swim buoys at um, Browns Beach need to be replaced. So I would recommend that the, we authorize the Park Board to purchase four buoys, model B961R at $119 each, plus $90 shipping and handling for Browns Beach, total cost $566. Did you want to do that like immediately? Well, we can't. We can't. Or you, or you, you just look. We're obviously not, not going to put them in, but <laughs> it would be nice that Mark could just. Go I was surprised that I was just looking at the request for the swim buoys. Well, it was actually supposed to be last special occasion. Okay. So yes, then we won't. Then we don't have to bring it up again if we can decide today. That's right. <laughs> Unless you want it on the agenda. Is, is that your motion? That's my motion. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah, I always forget about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he really wants this. Okay. Any other questions or comments regarding the motion? It's a spending decision, so uh, we will uh, do a roll call. Joe? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Jim? Yes. George? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay. No, no. We'll call you. Okay. New business with the board. Just a, a quick uh, kind of an announcement for you members of the board. February 13th and 14th is uh, uh, dates when elected representatives from this area will go down to Madison and meet with our elected representatives for the purpose of. Uh, beating them over the head on three particular issues this year, economic development priorities, transportation priorities, and workforce education priorities. <coughs> it is uh, coordinated by the St. Croix Economic Development Corporation, uh, Jackie Bradham in particular. So if any of you are interested in doing that. Uh, what was the date? February 13 and 14. Uh, elected re representatives from Polk, St. Croix, and Pierce counties. Go down to Madison, meet with a whole variety of elected uh, state representatives uh, as well as Senate people and just talk about what our concerns and issues are. So it's February 13 and 14. So I just want to make you aware of that. Okay. Uh, so that was number one. Number two, um, are, are you running, rerunning? Yeah. You fill out papers, all right. So that means that uh, Joe is running, Colleen is running, Mark is running. That's just why we're all sitting on the same side of the table tonight, uh, as am I. So therefore, at least we have candidates for the three trustee and one village, pro village president position that are open. And I thank the candidates for uh, running and uh, continuing your community service. Have there been any other papers that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. And not that you are aware of, right? Okay. Well, Lori is not aware of them. Then, <laughs> that haven't happened. That's about it. And then I got a call today from Steve Tracy. Steve Tracy's firm is, uh, will become a part of the Larson Allen accounting firm, which is actually a Twin Cities firm. But his uh, comment was the service will be transparent. We'll still be dealing with Steve Tracy. His offices will still be here in Hudson. They'll still maintain their offices in Rice Lake. Um, Steve Scheidler will be continue to be our accountant. So it, it'll be a transparent, non-event type change, but I just want to make you all aware of that. Okay. And Larson Allen is not a relative of mine, whoever Larson and Allen is. Somebody's already asked that. Yeah. Okay. That's my next question. I don't even know how they spell the name, and they probably spell it wrong. <laughs> all right, and your turn. Okay. That's it then. Second. Do that second? Aye. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Aye. Eight. I apologize again for all.